Hello powerful and galactic beings, welcome back to another video. It is hard to think different, speak different, see different, act different and be different in the modern society. And if you ever go against the rules of this modern society by following your heart, your intuition, and start doing for yourself, you are a powerful galactic soldier. The ancestors are proud of you. You are born to be great, so follow your heart. However, thinking different is not enough, you have to speak different. Speaking different is not enough, you have to see different. Seeing different is not enough, you have to act different. Acting different is not enough, you have to be different. Be the wolf amongst sheep, be the leader of the park and not the one that accept whatever the society throws out into the system of this world. Yes, it is quite hard to be different in this society, because every society acts as an instrument of social control. Every society has its own social norms, culture, customs and traditions and way of living. All used to follow them and if someone alienate from it, people of that society do not accept it which in turn creates problem for him. Your schools teach you to abide by rules so that you don't stand out. They also give you the absolute basic education so that you can work in some factory where you are a mere employee, who can easily be replaced if you cannot perform the duties properly. You are taught from kindergarten through 12th grade not to stand out and not to be more knowledgeable in any particular area than the student sitting next to you. We are socialized to be part of the group instead of acting as individuals. That makes any action or thought that differs from that of the others to be uncomfortable for some people. I found personally that thinking independently gave me a clear advantage over others, and pursued that often pointing out that I almost never agreed with everybody else. Instead I use logic and deduction to find out where I stood on things. I could therefore justify my stance to others whereas someone who follows the crowd cannot accept to say that everybody else does it as well. Self-expression is limited by social norms and laws, and some societies have wider boundaries for expression than others. Being different varies by time, place, and circumstance, by heredity, by appearance, by education, by religion, by hobbies, by occupation, and so on. The reality is, in the modern society, no matter how different you try to be, the society criticize you when you are struggling and losing, or need help in life. But they will not use the same amount of energy they spent in criticizing you to give you a helping hand. Even at that, the society will barely appreciate you when you are victorious. People will start following you after you have struggled and become successful. The society will lay on your feet when they need you. The society will neglect you when you need them. They will take great advantage of your kindness and empathetic nature. Despite that, they will feel jealous if you are in a better position. And rumors will be spread about you if you are at the top. For me, I don't care about society, because at the end of the day, it is my life, and I have to do what makes my soul happy. The sad reality of this modern society is that, you are loved for what you have and not who you truly are. Society has many eyes on me than minding their own. So, you have to find your niche and believe in yourself and persevere despite of perceived roadblocks. Minding our own business is the most difficult thing in the world. If society follows this, then we can see this world as heaven. But society in general is built entirely upon borderline psychotic people exploiting borderline retarded people. The strong dominate the weak. The clever dominate the strong. There is no equality. The middle class is toxic. It makes slaves feel like masters and masters feel like slaves. You must be evil in action, yet praised as good, in order to thrive in any society. We are taught that murder is wrong, but only if a human is murdered. What of other life forms? What made us to lose respect for mother nature and all creation? Is it because we don't have enough water, enough food, or is it that we don't have air to breathe? And that is why they 1% have lost respect for the 99%. They tell us whatever they want in order to induce a deadly fluid into our body. Also, we are taught that serial killers are bad, but hunting is a sports. And at the same time, we think we are the most intelligent in the whole universe. Lion, elephant, and other life forms can easily communicate telepathically, but the intelligent man cannot even hear our neighbor screaming for help. We are mocking the divine creation at the superlative degree. We are also taught that Auschwitz was evil, but slaughterhouses and farms are humane. We are becoming more hypocritical in every generation. We are taught that jail is for punishment, but zoos are a fun place for animals. In fact, man is truly our cruel kind of living organism. Just another major difference is the amount of meat humans consume. 
Pre-modern societies consumed meat, but unless that society was in a harsh environment, meat wasn't the everyday staple. People eat an amount of meat today that most of our ancestors would have found shocking. Western societies use meat as a condiment now. This has been enabled because hardly no one keeps and slaughters their own animals now, but animals in far greater numbers than the past pay for it. They don't ever get to live free either with the way most of the slaughter industry is still operated. It is depressing to know that our society is based on a bunch of lies and half-truths. It is built to ensure our survival and also to cover the fact that we are nothing but pathetic group of species who must be wiped out from the world. All these rules and regulations and mainstream notions in our society are nothing but lies which are meant to cover up the fact that we are the worst species. All these notions about love, morality, immorality, education, rights, politics, and so on are all false and invalid. The only truth is that we are a pathetic overgrown species who must be wiped out from this planet, otherwise we will destroy everything. And that is why the climate is changing drastically. We are very weak species who have stayed in this world like any other animal, will die out instantly which is the reason why we have built this society. That society is often relied upon to determine facts about ourselves. People rely on society to tell them they are dumb, fat, lazy, and hence become very fearful and conscious about whatever aspect of themselves that society finds unsatisfying. They change themselves and listen when society says they are not enough. What is the worse? People relying on society to develop judgmental opinions about others. You don't have to rely on society when it only disheartens you, be who you want to be, shape your world to be yours, not the ideal image that society is offering. But we all fall victim to this, we have all changed our looks, used products, bought shoes, bought trendy clothes because society demanded an ideal representation of everything about us. And the reality is, this will always be the case. We are society, we have all contributed to society to make it what it is today. It's as if that judging and conforming is part of human nature. But for what it's worth, you can wriggle free of this grasp, even if you're alone. So shape your own reality. Regardless of how hard they work, many people will never be able to do anything more than barely making end meet. And many successful people didn't get there by working any harder, but rather they just happened to catch a random lucky break. Many people will never know true and deep love with someone they can completely trust, but instead just stick with someone because they're afraid of being alone, or figure they couldn't do any better. Some women never get past being attracted to colossal jerks who treat them like objects. Some men never get past being attracted to mean-hearted women who treat them like doormats. Many of the things that are the most fun to eat are the worst for your fitness and health. People will never accept an abnormality in their social construct. Whether it's an individual, a group, or an idea, a society will be quick to discard and disown it, without even trying to understand it. Social media is the new platform to form opinions, where everyone follows what one joke page dictates. Conformity. Somewhat related to the first point, but the people will simply stick to whatever they believe in without leaving room for things which lie out of the realm of their beliefs. I don't really know if this is a problem of our generation, or it was present before we came along but most of the people have no idea about what they are doing. Social pressures play a big role in deciding one's preference. From career to hobbies, social circumstances tie your feet even before your birth. The cake is a lie, and there is nothing wrong in being different. Everyone has different perspectives about life. Everyone has different goals, but your being different should not hurt anyone else. Express yourself, everyone is leading their unique life. It's unique because life has set unique question paper for every one of us. So, there is nothing wrong in it. And therefore make people understand your views, and if anyone is not understanding, let them go. Time will make them understand, because we can't make everyone in our lives happy at a time. So chill and enjoy your own unique life. Being different is actually a plus point. With the increasing number of people, the need for the quality of being different is also increasing. Ask yourself, Amongst your friends who is your favorite? The one who always comes up with different new ideas and the one who is always different than the rest. To attract someone, also one has to be different, do things differently. I have seen it myself, I always try to be different I never prefer to do similar things, if you do, people will gradually start losing interest in you. Being different is very important because, at the end of the day, not everybody is going to be like Marcus Garvey, Martin Luther King, Muhammad Ali, Joseph Magafuli, 
Albert Einstein, and so on. So therefore, being different in your own unique way is something we all yearn to be. But having said that, it's also important to know what cost we are willing to pay to be a different kind of species in this modern society. You can take advantage of your uniqueness and use it to awaken yourself to the higher consciousness. One of the common feelings people have after a spiritual awakening is of being alienated from other people in their life. Usually, this experience comes after any blissful experience that may have arisen. For many people at the very outset of a spiritual awakening, they have a bliss phase, which ultimately does not last. No human experience lasts. As they come out of that particular experience, they suddenly notice that most people aren't remotely interested in changing behaviors to be in alignment with love and truth. And some people don't even like the fact that you're changing to be in alignment with such things. This can feel quite alienating. For others who are walking the conscious path and haven't awakened, the gradual stepping away from old unhealthy patterns creates the same type of situation. For as kind as you can be, many people don't want to accept you as a new person, and so you may find yourself far more friendless than you would have expected. The root of the issue in both scenarios is basically the same and where you might expect it, it's in the ego. So today, I would like to talk about facing this feeling of being different and alienation and letting go into the deeper space of oneness, where all is embraced and no one is alien from another. People have the potential to awaken spiritually. However, I believe certain experiences are needed to allow that awakening to occur as a unique being. Whether it is a near-death experience or trauma, an addiction, a failure, a broken heart or simply growing up feeling different, something is needed to force introspection, questioning and re-evaluation of certain aspects of your life. I believe it's difficult for most people to awaken their spirituality, because we are programmed from birth to think and act a certain way. Programmed by society, by our parents, by the media, we are constantly bombarded by information telling us what to buy, how to look, who to fear and giving us unrealistic ideals to pursue. We are busy consuming beyond our means and needs, we are addicted to fast food and drugs, we battle with depression, anxiety, and eating disorders and we are obsessed with fame and celebrities, and try to become one on social media. In this age of self-promotion and broadcasting ourselves, our ego has taken center stage and needs to be fed and validated constantly. Unfortunately, without removing the ego, the true self, the spirit will never be able to awaken. It seems like we have lost our alignment with our true nature, with our ancestors and most importantly with ourselves and our spirituality. Despite the concerning state of our society, I believe a revolution is coming. A revolution that has already begun within ourselves. If you are listening to this message, you are probably one of them. There seems to be a shift happening in the way people think and choose to live their lives. We are becoming more conscious of our impact on the environment, on our planet, our home and of what we feed our body and our mind. We are becoming more self-sustainable and independent from the systems in place, those who often prioritize their profit over our well-being. Little by little, we are waking up and becoming more aware, and there is no going back. So, let's continue helping our brothers and sisters shut down the noise and tune into a different frequency so they can hear and feel what the spiritual awakening has to offer. One of the aspects of a bliss experience that people forget is how connected they are to themselves. When someone is deeply connected to him or herself, then they naturally feel connected to the world around them. To this effect, alienation can easily be looked at with this question, when did we become disconnected from ourselves? At what point did we reject ourselves and some experience we are having? Especially when our issues begin to arise, our perspective of how at peace we can be, versus how agitated and upset we are when pain surfaces makes the experience particularly awful. If we are always in pain, we learn to numb it out and ignore it. Once we know real inner health, going back into pain feels 10 times worse. But this is how it has been for many people. Most people live in varying states of inner pain, and the worse the inner pain, the more likely someone is to lash out at others. Many spiritual people who don't think others are being conscious enough can lash out in many ways as well. This merely reflects how much inner pain is emerging from the individual, and they are likely to project that out onto partners, friends, bosses, employees, and other spiritual people. This emerging pain will very likely feel really alienating to you, and in these moments, it should now signal to you that it's time to go inside to do your work. We always listen people talking about changing the society. Actually, there are the constant problems prevailing in the society to which everyone wants to get rid of. But only few of them are willing to take initiative to make change. 
As an individual, we get enough opportunity to make the difference in society. Only what we have to do is to keep positive attitude towards it. There are many short and exclusive efforts which leads to a big difference with span of time. But before making change in society, you have to make change in yourself. Keep yourself involved in the society, look out the needy people and help them in possible ways, not just materialistically but emotionally, spiritually, and physically as well. Spread peace and love, convince others to stop practice of violence in any form. You must have encountered with the kids who are not lucky enough to attend the school. What you have to do is to collect them in a group at least thrice a month teach the moral values, good habits, importance of sanitation, their rights, way to escape from poverty or anything else possible to you. At least let them understand the reason behind their situation. Spread the skills and ideas to the people who has potential and are willing to work. I hope this video was helpful to you. Subscribe and share it. Peace, love and life.